Let's start with the questions on race condition and critical section. Consider three concurrent processes P1, P2 and P3 as shown below which access a shared variable D that has been initialized to 100. The processes are executed on a uniprocessor system running a time shared operating system. If the minimum and maximum possible values of D after the three processes have completed execution are X and Y respectively, then find the value of Y minus X. Here we can see the processes P1, P2 and P3 are accessing a shared variable D. Hence they are interdependent processes or cooperative processes. When cooperative processes are being executed concurrently, there is chance for one issue called race condition. Here P1, P2 and P3 are being executed concurrently on a uniprocessor system in a time shared manner. Hence here there is chance for a race condition because each of these arithmetic statements actually involve a set of operations such as reading the value from D, performing the calculation and writing the value to D. And they are not atomic so when these processes are being executed concurrently there is chance that more than one process are inside this piece of cords where they access the same variable d for example let p1 read the old value 100 from d it add 20 to it but before writing this updated value, suppose processor got preempted and P2 got the processor. Now P2 will read the old value 100 from D. It subtracts 50 from it and write that updated value to D. Now after some time, suppose P1 got the processor again. Now P1 will perform the write operation, but it had already made the calculation. So it performs the write operation as 120 to D. So here we just added, finally we added just 20 to 100. The result of this subtraction is not reflected in the final result. Similarly, based on the order in which these operations are executed, the final value of D can be different and this condition is called race condition. And here we are asked to find the maximum and minimum possible values for D. Here the minimum value for D occurs if the result of only the subtraction is reflected in the final result. The results of both these additions are not reflected in the final result. For that, P2 should read value from D before it is updated by P1 and P3 and then P2 should overwrite the update made by P1 and P3. For example, let P2 read the value 100 from D. It subtracts 50 from 100 but before writing this result to D, let the processor got printed and P1 got the processor. Now P1 read the old value 100, add 20 to it and update the value as 120 to D. Then suppose now P3 executes. P3 read the updated value 120, add 10 to it and write the updated value 130 to D. Finally, P2 got the processor again. P2 had already made these calculations. Now P2 will write the value 50 to D. So the final value of D is now 50, which is the minimum possible value. Similarly, the maximum value for D occurs if the result of the subtraction is not reflected in the final result and the result of both these additions are reflected in the final result. For that, the update made by P2 should be overwritten by the update of P1 and P3. For example, let P2 read the old value 100, subtracts 50 from it, before performing the update, P1 got the processor, it read the value 100, add 20 to it. Then let P2 gain the processor again and write the updated value as 15. 
Now let again P1 got the processor. Now P1 writes the value 122D and this updated value is read by P3. P3 add 10 to it and write the updated value 130. So here the final value of D is 130. Here the update by P2 is overwritten by the updates of P1 and P3. So the maximum possible value for D is 130 and the answer is Y minus 6, 130 minus 50, 80. Consider the question, the following two functions P1 and P2 that share a variable B with an initial value of 2 execute concurrently. The number of distinct values that B can possibly take after the execution is. Here also the processes P1 and P2 are accessing one shared variable B. So they are cooperative processes and they are being executed concurrently. So there is chance for a race condition. These arithmetic operations are not atomic and each of these operations involve a set of operations like reading the value, performing the calculation and writing the value. So here the process or the pro function P1 is reading from B and writing to B and P2 is also reading from B and writing to B. So if P1 execute first followed by P2 then P2 will read a value which is written by P1. P1 read the initial value 2, subtract 1, write it to C, read from C, multiply with 2, write it to B. Now P2 read that value 2 from B, multiply with 2, write it to D, read from D, subtract 1 and write it to B. So the final value of B now is 3. When P1 completes the execution, then P2 begins the execution. The final value of B equals 3. Now consider the other order. P2 begins the execution, complete the execution, then P1 begins the execution. P2 read the initial value 2, multiply with 2, write it to D, read from D, subtract 1, write it to B. Now P1 reads this value 3 from B, subtract 1, write it to C, read from C multiply with 2 and write it to B. So the final value of B is 3. If P2 begins the execution, complete the execution, then P1 begins the execution and complete, the final value of B equals 3, equals 4. Now consider this case, P1 begins its execution, but before completing the write at some point, somewhere here, suppose the processor got preempted and P2 got the processor and P2 begins the execution. Now what happened? P1 read the initial value 2, subtract 1, write it to C, read 1 from C, multiply with 2. Suppose here the processor got preempted and P2 begins the execution. Now P2 reads the initial value 2 from B. B is not yet updated. So the initial value 2 is read from B. Multiply with 2. Write it to D. Again read from D. Subtract 1. After this, suppose P1 performs the write first. Then the next value of B equals 2. And then if P2 performs the write, the value becomes 3. So the final value of B is 3. But here suppose P2 performs the write first, then P1, then the final value of B is 2. Now consider this case, P2 begins the execution. At some point somewhere here, suppose the processor got preempted before P2 performs the update, the processor got preempted and P1 got the processor. So P2 begins the execution, it reads the initial value 2 from B, multiply with 2, write it to D, read from D, subtract 1 from it. And before performing the write on B, suppose P2 got, P1 got the processor. So P1 read the initial value 2, subtract 1, write it to C, read 1 from C, multiply with 2, 
here again if p1 perform the right first then p2 then the final value of b is 3 otherwise if p2 performs the right first then p1 then the final value of b is 2 so the possible values of b are 3 4 and 2 and the number of distinct values that b can possibly take after execution is 3 so this problem such as race conditions occur when we have more than one process with a piece of code where they access a shared variable or a shared resource and these processes are inside that piece of code at the same time. Such a piece of code where the processes access a shared variable file or resource is called critical section. So this is a critical section for process P1, this is a critical section for P2 and this is a critical section for P3. And here the problem arises because the processes are inside their critical sections at the same time. So in order to avoid the problems due to critical section, we should prevent these processes from entering inside the critical section at the same time. So consider the next question. A critical section is a program segment which should run in a certain specified amount of time which avoids deadlocks where shared resources are accessed which must be enclosed by a pair of semaphore operations P and V. The answer is C. Critical section is a program segment where shared resources are accessed. In order to solve these critical section problems, solutions are put forward and these solutions usually add a piece of code called entry code in the beginning of the critical section. It makes the processes execute a piece of code called entry code before entering the critical section and make the processes execute a piece of code called exit code while exiting from the critical section. These entry codes and exit codes ensure that the processes are properly synchronized. And the solutions to critical section problems should ensure three conditions. The first of all, it should ensure there is mutual exclusion, mean if one process is inside the critical section, then the other processes should not be allowed to enter the critical section. And also there should be progress. If one process P1 wishes to enter the critical section, then another process P2 who is not in or who is not even wishing to enter the critical section should not block this process from entering the critical section. Mean a process who is in its reminder section should not block a process from entering the critical section. This will affect the overall progress of the system. And also there should be bounded weight. If one process P1 is allowed to enter the critical section while that process is inside the critical section. Suppose another process P2 made a request to enter the critical section. It should not happen that next time also P1 is given the chance again and again to enter the critical section. Once a process has made a request to enter the critical section, there should be a limit to the number of times this process is allowed to enter the critical section. It means there should be a bound to the waiting time of this process. So next we shall see the questions based on the two process solutions to critical section problems. 